read just a few verses of Scripture, and then we'll let you sit back down and preach to you what God's laid upon our heart. It's 11.45. I'll be through about 10 minutes after, and then we're going to have communion, and then we'll have, uh, uh, we're have we going to open the doors of the church. So stick with us, okay? In uh, 1 Kings chapter number 17, begin reading with verse number 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto him, Elijah, what have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art thou coming to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he carried, and he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he, and he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon uh, the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray your blessings upon this portion of God's Word. I pray the Spirit of God, Lord, would move upon this congregation of people. I pray the Spirit of God, Lord, would help us to rightly divide the Word of truth, knowing, God, that we live in the last days of time. Surely you must be coming soon. And I pray, God, as we walk in these days, Lord, we walk like Elijah, Lord, with faith to believe that what you say you'll do for us, God, you will. Lord, send revival to our nation, send revival to our land. But God, I pray, let it start here at the church. Let it start at the house of God. Lord, revive us again. Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we read these stories, we understand this lady had been, had they had sojourned uh, there for some time. Back in verse number, uh, uh, turn back here, back in verse number uh, 16, uh, the, after they were fed, the Bible says this, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. So for years, time or better, uh, they ate well. Uh, they sojourned there. Everything went fine, went about their daily business. And, and no doubt the widow lady thought, well, we've got it made. We're, we're doing all right. But then there comes a time of testing that must come to everyone. A friend, if you've not faced the battle as of late, you're getting ready to. If you're facing one now, hang on. Hey Amen. God's going to see you through. Hey Amen. And listen, if you just came out of a battle, thank God, praise the Lord, because he saw you through. Hey Amen. But I want to tell you this morning, everything you do, everything I do in these days that we live in, we must do it by faith in the Son of God. We must do it by knowing that God in heaven, amen, is on my side. God in heaven is on your side. And there's nothing, my friend, that God won't see us through. Hallelujah to God. Now this woman, she her, her faith was tested. Everything had been easy. And she probably thought all her troubles were over. Let me tell you something, friend. Her troubles were just beginning. Now we read the story. We know the story. But we got to believe the story. Amen. We got to believe this story of Elijah and the raising of this little uh, of this uh, widow woman's son. Now, what do we know about these two people? Elijah was a man of faith. He was a believer. The woman, she was a woman of faith. She was a believer. And as they went along, I don't know what happened in the past times that caused uh, you know uh, uh, this test to come upon her. We'll read about that a little more in a minute. But listen, whatever it was, Amen. God knew all about it. I don't know what Elijah had been doing in all this time, but we know he stayed with God. Friend, let me encourage you today to stay with the Lord. Let me encourage you to stay by the stuff because we need God. Amen. We need the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I know now more than ever I need the Lord. Amen. 
I'll preach myself to death in about 10 minutes. You keep praying, amen. I'm going to preach myself to death in just a little bit. But what a way to go. I'm so glad that I have faith in the Lord. And I'm glad that the Bible is there to teach us and to tell us of those that had faith in God and God saw them through. Hallelujah. Now let's get to the story just for a minute. We see that many times in the scripture there is testings that come our way. Philippians 1, 29 for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake. I get to worrying sometimes, you know, uh, if things go too smoothly because I know that there's something up. Amen. So I look around and I see, you know, well, things going pretty smooth. Look out. The devil's fixing to hit you. Amen. He's, he's fixing to attack you. He's fixing to try to cause you to trip up. Amen. He knows he's got his ways of doing it. Look out, amen. If you if you think everything's going well, look around. Amen. You're fixing to be attacked by the devil. You say, preacher, why are you telling us so? I want you to be forewarned. I want you to know. Listen, if you're going to live and stand for the Lord in these last days of time, you're going to have to stand for God. You're going to have, listen, you're going to have to get in, amen. And you're going to have to get in and not play church. Quit playing church and give yourself all to the Lord. Amen. Elijah put in all for the Lord. When he went before King Ahab, he put all in for the Lord. Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. When God said to move down to the brook, he said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. When it all dried up and he said, Elijah, I want you to go to the, to the widow woman's house. He got up and went. He was all in for God. The world's all in for a lot of things today, but there's few and far between those Christians that are all in for God. It's few and far between the preachers that are all in for God. I want you to know, friend, I'm all in. Hallelujah to God. I'm all in for Him. God, help me. God, use me. Lord, I, I pray that the Lord would, would use me above measure. Amen. I want to be all in for God. I faced a few things in the last few weeks. Man, the devil trying to trip me up. But I want to tell you something. God is, does give the victory. Amen. And oh, thank God, friend. We see here in this story that there is a terrible, terrible uh, 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 battle about to come to this uh, widow woman. Now, we must faith. We must believe. And we must understand that our faith is going to be tested. Zarephath. The name of that, the meaning of that name, Zarephath was a place of testing. So uh, we know about the trial of this person's faith, this widow woman's faith, and Elijah's faith also, that it was a trial of faith that they weren't expecting to happen. Everything come along to you sometimes, and oh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, just a couple of months ago, my mama went to the hospital and the last thing Daddy and I and the brother expected was for her to go to the hospital and, uh, and then a week later she would be home with the Lord. We weren't expecting that. We didn't know that was going to happen. But amen, I'm glad for the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm glad for the grace of God that no matter what we face, God's there. And I know you've been through times in your life when you something would come along and say, boy, that caught me by on the blind side. I didn't know that was going to happen. Listen, friend, the longer you live and serve the Lord, the more times there your faith is going to be tested. But, amen, the, when your faith is tested, stay by the stuff. Don't give up, amen. Stay by the stuff. Stay with the Lord. He will help you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will encourage you. This was unexpected. The trial of her faith was not a light trial of faith. It was a severe trial of faith. Her little boy, whom she loved dearly, he got sick. He got sick, and he got sick enough that he died. You said, a preacher, this is not a real, a real event that happened. This is a story in the Old Testament. I want to tell you, it is a real story. It is a real event. It's not something make up or make believe. This young man died. And uh, as, as for what reason it was, for a purpose, 
It didn't just happen by chance. You remember when things happen in your life, it is for a reason. It is for a purpose. You might not understand it now. You might not understand it down the road. Someday when you get to heaven, you'll understand it maybe. But I want to tell you something. Everything God does is for our good. Amen. Everything we face is for a purpose in our lives. Sometimes it's to draw us closer to God. Sometimes it's that others might see Jesus in us. But everything God does in our lives is for a purpose. You ain't, listen, you, we, we sometimes we face a battle and we cry out, oh me, oh my. Listen, you and I face things that everybody else has faced or is going to face. Amen. We're in this together. Amen. And church, I beg you with all that's within me, stay by the stuff. Stay with God. When the trial of our faith comes as a church, stay with God. Don't run. Amen. But stay with the Lord. I was told on this last week, and I'll share just a little bit with you, that there are going to be some churches in our area that are going to be faced with persecution. You know, I'll talk to you later about it if you want to know. But are going to be faced with some persecutions, and, and all we can do when we come to that is stand our ground. Amen. Stand our ground. Stay by the stuff. But I'll tell you, my friend, I'm glad to know that God will see me through and see you through if we'll stay by the stuff. Gables Creek, we got a lot of churches in Madison County. And, you know, they do what they want to do. And, amen, whatever they do is their business. But you and I must stay by the stuff. If every church in Madison County will stay by the stuff, we'll see revival. But if Gables Creek will stay by the stuff, if Gables Creek will stand for what's right, we'll see revival. Amen. If we want it. If we want it, we'll see revival. Oh, preacher, we've gone too far to have revival. Amen. You go ahead and believe that, but I'm going to believe God that he'll send me a stir and send me a move and send me a little reviving. Amen. This woman's trial of her faith was very severe. She lost her son. He died. The Lord allowed this to happen for some purpose. And then we see <coughs> this test, but we also see that when she was tested, her faith collapsed. In the time of testing, her faith collapsed. She turned on Elijah and reproached him and, and, uh, and blamed him even for her son's death. But Elijah didn't get angry. Elijah didn't get upset. In the short time that he was around her, that he, you know, that, that uh, he was sustained there at her house, she believed in him, <coughs> believed he was a man of God. And yet her son died and she turned on him and blamed him even for the death of her son. But Elijah didn't get upset. Elijah didn't get mad. He was a wise man. And he, he told her after her faith collapsed and after that uh, she said all hope is gone, all hope is She forgot how God had taken care of her in the past. She forgot how that she was given up to die when Elijah came along. She forgot about the, the, the cruise of oil and the barrel of meal that hadn't wasted the whole time, that hadn't given out the whole time. She forgot all of that because her son had died and because she thought Elijah was part of the cause of it. She said, why have you come here? Did you come to bring my sin to remembrance? And I don't know what it was. I don't know what was in her past. But she said, did you come for that reason? And now my son has died. But Elijah, being the wise man that he was, Elijah's faith went into operation. Elijah's faith, number three, Elijah's faith went into operation. The widow's faith collapsed, but his faith went into operation. It went into action. Because Elijah believed God. Now look, Elijah looked back and saw that he stood before King Ahab and, uh, and got away and got escaped and God had... By his faith, Elijah had went down to the brook Cherith and the ravens come in the morning and afternoon and, and brought him a bread and flesh. And then he saw that how God had directed him as he walked by faith to the widow woman's house, how God had sustained them and his faith, his faith in the Lord said, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but I know you've got the answers. And he stepped into action. Amen. And what did he do? He stepped into action and he said, he said, uh, okay, let me have your son, and he took the son. Now listen, what does the Bible say about our faith? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. 
Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Now Elijah claimed to have faith, but his faith was put into action, and it proved his faith. You may, prove, you may stand today and say, I've got faith. But listen, when your faith is tried and you go into action for the Lord and your works, amen, prove your faith. Now you're saved by faith. You're not saved by works. You're fa saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But that salvation by grace that you have inside of you will work out, amen, in faith. Hallelujah. And so he told the woman, he said, all right, now we're going to keep calm here. She was in hysterical. How would you feel if it was your son at the point of death and then he died? And, and all hope is gone. You lost your son. You lost the one that you loved. You lost that only son if that was. But at the time, that was the one she had and she lost him. He died. Now in the time of a crisis, what happens with your faith? Your faith keeps calm. Your faith keeps calm. Lord, I know what's happened. I know, Father, that you lay allowed this for a reason. But I'm going to believe you by faith. That, God, you're doing something in my life. Or you're doing something through me to some other one, somebody else's life. Elijah, when the test came, he, his faith was he was calm as his faith was tested. Sure, he was grieved. No doubt he'd come to know that little boy. No doubt he'd become friends with that little boy. But his faith also, he was also upset by it all, And he, but he was calm when the time of testing came. Elijah didn't know what God was doing. He couldn't see what God was doing, but he believed that what God was doing was for the good. You're sitting here today, some of you don't know why God's let, allowed the things to happen in your life. God knows why. God knows sometimes it's to draw us closer to Him. Sometimes it's just to give us some, uh, you know, some strength when other things come down the road. But God knows why we go through the things we do, even though we might not understand. We just got to believe God. Hey, man, we just got to know that He knows what He's doing is right. The first thing Elijah does by his faith is he tells God about it. Amen. Now God already knew. But Elijah uh, took the child and he went into the bedroom, his loft up there where he stayed. Where he went in there and he laid that child down. He laid down beside him and he talked to God about it. Amen. When you've got a problem, my friend, the best thing you can do is take it to the Lord. Amen. And take it to him and tell him all about it. And he was sore distressed, but he, he laid down across that child. And he prayed to God, and, and guess what? God honored his prayer. Elijah's faith, he, listen, he took him up there believing God was going to raise him up. He took him up there believing that God was going to answer his prayer. And so he laid himself across that young man, and that young man revived, and his soul came back into him. Amen. And he revived and began to breathe again. And what did he do then? He took child down and now we see the fruit of faith the fruit of faith and Elijah gave the resurrected young and back to his mother and I believe he said look see what God's done see what God's done handed that little child to that mama and don't you know that mama was rejoicing don't you know that, that even though you know, she was probably ashamed of all that she told Elijah and that blamed him for it all, she was probably ashamed. But what, what happened was he gave the child and the fruit of faith was a living child instead of a dead child. Amen? The fruit of the faith was, was his belief that God would raise him, and God did. And friend, you live and serve the Lord. You have faith in God, and you'll see the fruit of your faith. you have faith in God? Do you trust in the Lord? 
Friend, these messages that I, God's given me to preach to you are not idle messages. They're messages that you're going to need. I promise you, you're going to need them. I'm warning you, amen, to get closer to the Lord than you've ever been before in your life. I promise you, you're going. when the battle comes, when the trial of your faith comes in the coming days or months, amen, you're going to need to have your faith in the Lord. Listen, you're not going to look at the you're not going to look at the TV and gain any information about your faith. You're going to have to look to the Word of God. You're not going to be strengthened, Amen, by going to to the world and and being amused by worldly pleasures. You're going to have to go on your knees in prayer and ask God for His help, Amen. Our focus needs to turn from the things of this world to the things of God. Now, preacher, that's pretty old-fashioned. I'm exactly right, though, and you know it. Amen. My preaching, amen, to you about your faith in the Word of God is just as prevalent now as it was 200 years ago. We've got to have faith in God. We've got to trust God. And we've got to, we've got to strengthen ourselves through this blessed book and on our knees in prayer. If you'll do that, God will help you. But if you go into this battle unprepared that we're going to face as believers and as a church, church will collapse. Our faith will collapse. But we must be strong in the Lord. Listen, God has got to be more important to us than anything else in life. Your church life has got to become more important to you than anything else outside of this church. Amen? Now, folks get mad at me sometimes when I... When I say, you know, you need to be faithful to the Lord, you need to be faithful to the house of God. But I'm telling you, and you listen to this preacher this morning, if you're going to stand in the evil day, you're going to have to have your church family. You're going to have to have each other. We're going to have, I listen, I need you people. I'm just going to tell you, I need every one of you here. I don't want to get by without one of you, everyone in this building. I need you. I need your fellowship. I need your help. I need your prayers. I need you today. And we need to be strong in the power of his might. How's your faith this morning? How's your fellowship this morning? Do you love the Lord? Is he above all? Is he the one that you look to every day? Is he, is he foremost in your thoughts and in your, in your mind? Is it God in heaven and the things he can do for you and the things you need to do for him? If not, my friend, we've come a long way backward. We need the Lord. Now look, this world out there has got a lot. This world out there has got a lot to offer to get your attention away from the things of God. But what's the most important thing to you and me? God help me that it be God and the things of God. I want to quit my job so bad I, can't, I, can, I, can, I can almost taste it. I want to quit my job and I can't. But I want to. Not that I don't like my job. I do. I've got a pretty good job. I have a hard time with help sometimes, but I've got a pretty good job. But I'd rather be doing things for the Lord. But until I can do that, amen, I'm going to serve the Lord the best I can. Hallelujah. I'm going to do what I can for God. And listen, friend, you in this day that we live in need to do everything we can for the Lord. To get the gospel out to this community. Man, friend, Jesus comes back. I want us to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. I want Gabriel's Creek to be running 100%. Amen. In faith and in power and the Spirit of God and the devil not around here to, dis to destroy and to disturb us and to distract us. Amen. What do you want in your life? What do you want in your life? Father, we thank you for the Word of God this morning. Lord, I thank you for your help. Lord, I beg you in Jesus' name, God, that you touch our hearts. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to understand that our faith, Lord, needs to be solely in thee and not on this earth or the things of this earth. But God, that we need to be looking to thee daily in our lives to, to strengthen us and to help us. And Lord, whatever we're doing, God, help us to do it in the power of thy might. Lord, we live in this world, but God, we don't have to become a part of this world. 
Lord, we live in this world and we need to witness to those that are in this world because you're coming soon. God, when the trial of our faith comes along, God, help us, I pray, to stand sure and stand true on the things of God. Bless us now in Jesus' name. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I preach to you what the Lord laid upon my heart. I'm sure. I'm sure that I preach to you what God laid on my heart today. How's your faith? How's your faith? If you're here and you're lost without God, amen, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. If you're, if, you're, if you're not saved, if you don't get born again by the Spirit and the power of God, you'll die and go to hell without hope. And no amount of praying or anything else anybody can do can keep you out of hell if you die lost without God. I wonder if there's someone right here this morning raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost without God. I've never been saved. I don't know what it is. I'll go to hell if I don't get saved. I wonder if there's someone that will admit, amen, this morning, that you're lost without God. Would you slip out your hand? Think about it, my friend. Eternity is a long time. Hell's a hot place. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Either one. I wonder if there's a believer here today say, Preacher, my faith has been tested. 